Hi, today we will talk about the different types of extrapyramidal or neurological side effects of haloperidol and other antipsychotic drugs. We already know that antipsychotics are classified into typical or older generation and atypical or newer generation antipsychotics. We also know that the extrapyramidal symptoms occur more frequently with typical antipsychotics because they have a stronger dopamine receptor blocking action. Amongst the typical antipsychotic drugs, the high potency ones are more likely to produce extrapyramidal symptoms and it is most with haloperidol. The low potency ones are less likely to cause extrapyramidal symptoms and it is least with thioridazine. Let us now have a look at the various types of extrapyramidal or neurological side effects that may occur with the use of antipsychotic drugs. So we begin. The first is acute dystonia. The word acute means early. So the symptoms in acute dystonia occurs 1 to 5 days after drug initiation. In acute dystonia, there is uncontrolled muscle spasms mostly occurring over the face, tongue and neck. The highest risk of suffering from acute dystonia is younger patients with a peak incidence between 10 to 19 years of age. This condition is managed by using central anticholinergic drugs such as benzotropin and trihexpanidil which is mentioned in the bottom of the screen. Moving ahead, the second type of extrapyramidal symptom is Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism occurs slightly later that is 5 to 30 days after drug initiation. The clinical picture of Parkinsonism is easy to remember. It comprises of bradykinesia, rigidity and tremors. We can remember this by the short form BRT. Now, one very interesting point. Levodopa is not effective in drug-induced Parkinsonism. Why? Why Levodopa is not effective in drug-induced Parkinsonism? This is because drug-induced Parkinsonism does not occur due to dopamine deficiency. Dopamine is already present in the brain. It is just that this dopamine is not able to act on the dopamine receptors. Why dopamine is not able to act on dopamine receptors? Because the dopamine receptors are already blocked by haloperidol or other antipsychotic drugs. So what do we do to manage this? We reduce the dose of antipsychotics and more importantly we give central anticholinergic drugs. These central anticholinergic drugs decrease the acetylcholine content in the brain and therefore restores the dopamine acetylcholine balance in the brain. The next type of extrapyramidal syndrome is akathisia. It occurs 5 to 60 days after drug initiation. The classic feature of akathisia is restlessness and irresistible desire to move around. The patient will not be able to remain in one's position and will continuously be moving here and there. Akathisia is managed by dose reduction and by giving clonazepam and propanolol. <coughs> the next is neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Although neuroleptic malignant syndrome is considered to be an idiosyncratic reaction to drugs that alter CNS dopamine pathways, I will discuss this here as a neurological adverse effect of antipsychotics. This occurs weeks to months after drug initiation. It is characterized by muscle rigidity, fever, unstable BP, altered consciousness, etc. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is managed by supportive measures, immediate stoppage of antipsychotics and by giving dendroline sodium and bromocriptine. The last type of extrapyramidal symptom is tardive dyskinesia. The word tardive means late. So the symptoms in tardive dyskinesia appears late. That is months to years after antipsychotic drug initiation. Tardive dyskinesia is characterized by involuntary painless movements of the face and the upper limbs. It is most commonly occurring in the elderly patients and the treatment is usually unsuccessful if given late during the course of the disease. So if we look at the first and the last reaction that is AD and TD that is acute dystonia and tardive dyskinesia, we observe that acute dystonia occurs early during therapy and it occurs mostly early during life. So early goes with early. Tardive dyskinesia occurs late during therapy and it occurs mostly late during life. So late goes with late. Thanks for watching. 
If you find this beneficial, please share and if you have not subscribed yet, please do. Thank you.